Welcome, everyone, and happy holidays. We're so happy to have you here for our last webinar of 2020. We have one day until the weekend, 15 days until Christmas, 21 days until we can put 2020 in the rear view mirror. Type me a note about how that makes you feel. But I know that you're not here today to discuss these numbers. You're here to talk about statistical reporting because the numbers you do in business matter to you and to everyone that um, is interested in your business, your administration, your stakeholders, your constituents. And Chuck is going to lead us through the discovery of statistical reporting. We'll be watching for your questions in the chat box. And Chuck has all the reporting quest requests that you uh, put in the box when you signed up for this session. And so he'll probably get those covered as well. Chuck, we are ready to hand things over to you. Very good. Sure. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, Sharon and I have some uh, feedback, so we, we need to mute occasionally here. Uh, first thing I want to ask is how many of you have run reports out of the statistics area. Raise your hand if you have run a report out of the statistics area, just to kind of give me an idea of how many pros we've got in the group. And uh, there's a lot of hands aren't showing. So hopefully it's because you're drinking eggnog and not uh, actually not going in that area. But that'll be one. We're going to give you kind of an overview at the beginning, but then we're really going to focus on reports available within the student manager statistics area and a number of sleeper, if you would, statistical reports that are in deadbeat. Uh, again, my favorite area. So what are we going to do today? Um, talking about numbers, and, and when we talk about statistics, we're talking about uh, information that you can make program decisions. We've done things on data-driven decision making, and this is really where we're all kind of coming back to. Uh, we're going to talk about the importance of coding, uh, again, information to include, and then, like I said, we're going to close off strong with the bulk of the program on the exploring statistical reports. So I hope that's what you're here for. Let's get going. Um, why do numbers matter about your programs? Well, obviously, Student Manager is a database that holds information. And that information is usually valuable to people. And number one, to you guys, as staff, as people that manage the program, you, get, you need that information to pass on to your directors, the people that hold you accountable, uh, uh, both uh, fr from administratively within an organization and stakeholders, your customers, uh, whoever is funding your unit, if that's a government, a state, or uh, a community organization. Uh, so again, that, that's, that's one of the groups that, that eat the numbers, that care about your numbers. Uh, for program developers, uh, looking at the numbers helps you decide about programming. Again, uh, who marketing your programs, what kind of programs to offer, uh, making decisions about culling programs. You always hate to kill a program that you might have loved over the years, but if it's really not generating enrollments, if it's not serving the public, you really ought to get rid of it, uh, put it uh, put it to pasture, and um, and find some new programs that that will meet people's needs. Uh, and again, the marketing decisions, trying to build enrollments in your programs, finding out who is attending a particular program, uh, finding out if there are people you're missing in your in your uh, marketing mix. Um, and, and try to bring, again, more butts and seats or more, uh, I guess, in name of butts and seats, it's, uh, uh, you know, people logged on to your Zoom class to be able to participate. Why are they important? Uh, well, uh, again, uh, it, it's the old garbage in, garbage out. Uh, it, it's like if you, if you don't have a bit of information, it's hard to make decisions based on that information. So again, um, what we're going to do is talk about, uh, again, and that's part of your task in this, is to determine what information you need to help you make decisions. Uh, and then number two, disable or enable, or enable the appropriate code fields in Student Manager. 
you've got literally dozens of code fields available to you and then make sure the values in those code fields match up with the type of marketing programming uh, if you would administrative or how say statutory data requirements that, that you need to have um, so what can codes do well they can answer uh, we've talked about this what courses to offer what courses to abandon where are customers coming from interests demographics of customers and again that the more you know presumably about your programs about who they serve who's coming who are the people coming the better you'll be able to develop programs and offer programs that meet the needs and to keep your program relevant and viable, which is really what we're, we're trying to do. Um, so what is the big deal with codes? Well, we, we kind of mummed around this. They are data points that you can use to make decisions. There's a couple different types of codes. Number one, you talk about gimmies. These are things that just kind of fall into place, an address, a zip code, the date registered, uh, the interest code, if you're properly using course subject codes, those kind of go automatic. You don't really have to worry about them. However, there are others in there that you could, and you see the should there, use. Maybe you need birthday, maybe that's valuable, maybe statutory, maybe you want to get the birth year to be able to get an age analysis of your participants. Gender, is that valuable to your programming? Do you want to get the company name, the company type, job type? And then you see tracking code. You see tracking code there. Uh, I would say that's a should. You really ought to be trying to capture, getting students to fill in the tracking code, which is how did I find out about this course that I am paying my money to enroll in? And I'm gonna ask for another show of hands. How many of you really try to work on tracking, uh, capturing tracking codes for your registrations? Raise your hand. Raise your hand, all right. I'm seeing hands go up, making me happy. This is the best Christmas present I could ever have. Good deal, all right. A lot of good response on that. Can you overdo coding? And I say, well, is it, can you overdo anything? Well, just like the eggnog at the Christmas party or whatever. It's finding that right balance. And again, the issue is how much data you need or what is your opinion about data that would help you make good decisions and serve your clients with the potential of overloading your students screen with data that they're gonna say at some point, forget about it, I'm going elsewhere. So again, uh, that's a dance that you have to kind of uh, uh, work out amongst yourselves as far as what's required, what would be beneficial, and again, how much we can capture that without annoying or irritating or dis how do you say disincentivizing your student. So again, and probably the big, big, big takeaway is that you really periodically ought to look at your screens and decide what codes you really need. Uh, especially on your web ones, the ones that you're using on the web. Uh, if you're not using that code anymore, get rid of it or take it off of your student screen so that you're not, again, uh, creating any kind of disincentive for a student to participate in your programs. So, well, how do you do that? Well, there's a couple of different ways to get to the, the code editing screen. Uh, editing from the quick launch or preferences or edit preferences from the main menu, but it lands you in the preferences screen. <clears throat> uh, they're organized by the data screen in student manager. You can enable or disable them by checking on the box. Uh, and you can, in several cases, change the value of, or the label or the, I like the Tupperware storage box, if you're not going to use ethnic origin, but you want to use alumni status, they're an alum or they're not an alum, a resident or not a resident, you could take one of these fields, repurpose it to capture the information that's beneficial to you. Sharon, any questions so far? Are we doing good? You're doing just fine. Thanks. All right. So once you've identified what codes you're going to capture or what you're going to turn on and use, is to make sure that the values you have in that code list are up to date and relevant. 
And this is where the code editing comes in. And uh, this happens to be the source code tracking code. Uh, and again, this is one that might change depending on if you use some specific tracking codes. For instance, if you were using a bulletin or a billboard, you actually bought a billboard on I-95 uh, for last fall. Well, if that billboard is no longer up on I-95, you really ought to disable that code, make it inactive. In this case, you wouldn't want to delete it because you want to have it for historical reference, but make it inactive so that code doesn't appear in your dropdowns when you're adding codes to the student. Uh, so what are some types of codes on the name screen? Uh, of course, a lot of them here. Uh, certainly a big one I would focus on is a source code. That's again, how did they find out about your program? Interest codes, and again, you can add modi additional, additional interest codes. You can allow students to add additional interest codes on the web person interest form. Uh, but of course, if you put in subject codes on your courses, this will automatically populate. Organization code or occupation code. Again, if depending on your program, if you're doing business and professional programming, this might be a valuable component for you. Uh, what is the job or position of the people attending? What type of organization do they represent? Again, things that might help you understand who you're serving and be able to develop programs or market to them better. Uh, demographic data, a lot of these, if you're doing statutory requirements for state reporting, you might use. Some of these might be a value for developing programs. Again, depending on your needs and what is useful for marketing or statistical or statutory, statutory reporting purposes. And then certainly don't forget custom codes. Uh, course codes, well, the course code, which is kind of ambiquitous, subject code, and we, we talked about the importance of that. And again, categorizing your programs by the department sponsoring, uh, who the account number, these kind of things, category, using the category field to group courses of like programs, open enrollment versus online versus course conferences versus uh, maybe uh, kids camps or hybrid classes, if that would help you kind of analyze performance of your programs, create a code for that. Um, registration codes, of course, the big one here is the registration tracking code, which is, you know, what promotion brought that registration and the money into your bucket status code and that's maybe more for internal tracking and then custom codes which again are probably more for facilitating needs on a particular program and again don't forget the user defined fields name course uh, registration pay they all have user defined data fields that you can use to capture data uh, about your program i don't see questions so we're going to keep on a plug-in Collecting data, well, you've developed the codes, you've determined what it is that you would help you run your program, so now you've got to capture it. So again, um, what codes are optional and which codes would be required? Again, this will reference this back to ACEWeb. Train staff to ask for and enter codes if they're dealing with people on the phone. Again, so many of registrations now are on the web but you still have people calling in for information. And again, uh, we call it the Wanda factor, which is Wanda, your frontline person, Wanda or Will or William, uh, the frontline person who is dealing with the phone and customers coming in. Adding codes to the ACE web profile page. Again, uh, making sure your web registrations have the ability to capture that code. If you, if you have a lot of proxy registrations, make sure those are on the Enroll Somebody Else page. And again, set the required data in ACEWeb as required. And again, if you really need the data, um, I, I have a personal bias against having, whereas within ACEWeb on your person page, you know you can make any data field on that page a required field. But that means that if a student doesn't fill it out, they can't go beyond that point and enroll and pay you money. 
So again, I would be very careful about how many fields on the ACEWeb uh, sign-up page you make as required because those are each one a hurdle that the student has to bypass in order to get to where you want them, which is in the class and with the money in the bank. Um, and again, um, so anyway, that, that's a concern of mine that you, we don't overdo that. Well, once it's collected, we are now ready to generate reports. So we've rem, run through this pretty quick here. So now let's take a look at some of these reports that um, I think are critical in, in your business. Uh, there are several of them actually within the deadbeat area. Half-life, first time enrollee, first course registration, learn life history, prior year growth. And then of course, we're gonna go into the statistical reports which have the demographic summary and the top dog reporting both on the course and the name and then tracking code reporting. Uh, so again, I hope that you have seen a bunch of these reports. If not, we're going to certainly give you the ability to, um, to be able to take a look at it. We're gonna go through them on the PowerPoint and then we'll jump to student manager and actually run some and and this is where I'm going to invite you if you've got a particular data point or set of data you'd like to see, go ahead and type it in the note for Sharon and she can kind of give me some, uh, uh, how do you say, stump the chump or some uh, reporting uh, test cases that we can show for you. Deadbeat reports. Uh, again, deadbeat uh, uh, under the accounting, one line, one reg deadbeat. Uh, reports in this area, There's a. this is one of the more uh, multi-purpose reporting areas in. One of the big reports in there that I think are val is of value is the half-life report. And what the real benefit of this is that if you're running courses from year to year, and especially maybe big events or conferences, um, summer camps, you can look at the half-life report you, what you would do is run the half-life report for last year's program. Look at this date here, which is at what number of weeks prior to the start of the class did you get half of your enrollments? And this is a fake set of data, so it doesn't, the numbers don't fill in very well. But then compare that with well, how many weeks you are out from that class and look at the number of enrollments you've got for the current enrollment that should give you some kind of reference to how well this year's enrollments are coming compared to last year's. Um, again, the question on the half-life was it's under uh, the accounting, it's under accounting, one reg, uh, one line, and it's additional reports. Um, okay, half-life report. First time enrollee report. This is kind of a unique one. This is again in that same area, additional reports under Deadbeat. But what this does is if you're wanting to look at enroll, uh, courses and you wanna know how many enrollments did we have this term for that are brand new, if you would, uh, virgin students uh, for the program in this particular term. <clears throat> and again, I believe uh, in, in several of these reports we're going to reference, your student manager report set may not have the most current report. I think there might have been a bug or a problem with the first time enrollee report in uh, a lot of the older databases. So if you were wanting to get one, um, we'll talk about that. Well, I'll just tell you, uh, what, what I'd recommend you do is download a new demo and then export that report out of the demo. So, and the way you do that is um, go to tools, reports, export additional report. If we said we want that first time enrollee report and Chuck says we need to use the one from the demo, there is the first time enrollee report. You could export that out and then import it back into your report set. Uh, and again, if you've got any questions about that or having any difficulty getting that report updated, contact your tech. Uh, 
they're happy to help you with that. Uh, but that first time enrollee report uh, could be an interesting, that, that would let you know how many new people are we drawing into the program to give you an idea about how your outreach efforts are going. Here's another interesting one again in the deadbeat area. Uh, first course registration. And so the idea is that it would allow you to say which of the courses out there would give you um, the longest, if you would, you, the, the term tail. Uh, by enrolling in course XYZ, student A will take 10 courses over their lifetime. If enrolling in course C, a student might only take three dollar three courses over their lifetime. And so you'll see the idea, it'll show uh, the first course offered and how many subsequent courses uh, a person took uh, after taking that initial course. So again, uh, it is a interesting report, you kind of have to wrap your brain about that. Uh, but again, um, it is, it's one in deadbeat that's been around for a while. I think that's, that's, that's pretty solid. Um, life history of a report. And, and this is one, if you've heard of the term, lifetime value of customers. Um, this is kind of uh, gets you to that, and what it allows you to do is to pick a sub. You pick a data sample. Uh, you grab a quarter's worth of students, or you grab students, and you could do it with one specific class, and that has to do with the query you're going to select. And then what you'll do is run it. Uh, there are a couple of reports. One is attendance by year, and one is attendance by quarter. And we're gonna get you into that when we get into the live data. But what you would do is you'd pick a quarter uh, out of that. Now this, this is a, a, a query for two, which doesn't give you a good example, but you'd say, I want all of the students in quarter one of 2019, which would be what, uh, for most quarters, July uh, through September. And what you would do is you would see 100% here, and then you're going to see a decreasing level going backwards and a decreasing level going forwards. It's basically a bell curve that will let you see how, lo how, how long before they took a course this quarter had they been in your system, and how many quarters after that particular incident of course taking did those students take courses you know, into the future or after that? So again, it gives you a kind of the longevity. You know, How long are students coming and how long are they sticking around uh, within your program? That's kind of the stickiness you know, of, of, of your programming. Prior year growth, and this is one, uh, you know, bless you all with this enrollments from starting in like February of this year compared to previous years. Uh, it'll be ugly, but if you say, well, I really want to know how bad were we this uh, second, third, fourth quarter compared to a year ago. The prior year quarterly growth rates, and there's quarterly growth, there's term growth, but this would give you the idea that last year in quarter three, you had X number, and this might be more, this might be sadly what it's like now. What is quarter three for this year and the uh, change that you saw? It's gonna confirm what you're already, your pain that you're already feeling. Um, all right, so now we're moving, uh, and I'm gonna stop, we've been looking at the PowerPoint. Let, let's go into the database and take a look at this. So we're gonna go into some of the live, uh, the live components. So again, uh, most of the reports I've done thus far have been in one line, one reg deadbeat. And again, it's in the additional report area. And so again, there is first time enrollee, first course registration, Again, if you look at first time enrollee, you'll see that Matthew updated that or ACE user updated that on the 30th of the month, which was like we just figured out there was something wrong with it here at the end of October, November. Uh, there is your learn a life history. There's a, or the half-life report. Uh, this is that life history. 
Um, and remember, I was talking about the life history reports. They are coded for a specific time frame. My guess is that most of you, because you've been running student manager for several years, you don't have some of these current um, updated quarterly life history and uh, year by year life history reports. So again, uh, if you are savvy enough to grab a demo, download them or export them from the demo and import them, you're good to go. If not, you know, get with your tech and you can ask them, send me the last two, uh, the most updated quarter and the life history report, and they can send you an email with those reports to uh, uh, get you updated. Again, there are those prior year growth remarks, by month, by quarter, by term. Now, one of the things to note is that when you're looking at these reports, you might go over to the notes area and see if there are tips about how to run it, i.e. what kind of query uh, that you're gonna use. And so again, this is one, the idea of quarterly report, uh, you would typically wanna run it based on a, there we go, based on a range of dates. And so if you were wanting to run reports between uh, last year and this year, you'd run it from say 0101 2019 through 1231 2020, which would then give you a 2019 year compared to the 2020 year. So again, your queries certainly uh, are critical in, in, in looking at your, your criteria. Uh, again, so look at the notes and see what kind of, and here's one about term. Well, uh, the idea of using term, this is kind of predicating that you're going to use the term model in the ACEWARE recommended, which is course codes begin with the two digit of the year, 20, and a single digit of the term, whether that is F for fall, S for spring, or one or A, B, C, D for term, first, second, third, fourth terms. All right, so anyway, that is the, um, that is the uh, deadbeat area where we've been running through uh, the examples thus far. And we're moving on to statistical reports. Again, um, that is an area that I like so much, we even have a shortcut to it. So again, uh, names, uh, demographic summary, and names, performance sorting. So the demographic summary is set up where you, it's a little different setup screen than your normal reporting. Uh, you go there and you pick a variable. It's basically cross-tab analysis for those of you who have taken your statistical methods courses. Cross-tab analysis where we take a single bit of data about the records, the sex, the birth date, when they were registered, what city they live in and you cross tab that against a set of data, uh, which would be your query, what data do I wanna analyze city by, uh, or the source code? Uh, do I wanna look at just the source codes for, and this is an example, we just wanna look at 2021. And I wanna say, I wanna look at all the different source codes that were generated from my 2021 courses. Uh, it'll ask typically about the money, due paid, and it'll give you a report. Now, this was actually, I guess, city. Let's go back to that. So that for each city, how many names from that city, how many registrations, the total amount due, percentages thereof, and the average course fee per city. So it's really a powerful reporting area in that it lets you look at what your students are doing and how much are they contributing to your enrollments or bottom line financially. Performance sorting, and this is one we affectionately called top dog reports. Um, again, a little different setup. You can choose it to do it both on names and by firms, and you can rank order these by money paid, courses taken, hours earned, or credits earned. Now, the nice thing is that it gives you the data on all of those items, uh, whether which, no matter which one you pick as the sorted order. So we pick again the query, which is what data are we gonna run this on? Uh, pick your money status, 
and it'll tell you, so based on courses taken, here are my top 10 students. Now you'll note it also shows you the fees paid, hours generated, CE is generated, yada, yada. So you get a little bit of everything with that report. Okay, moving over to the course. There is a corollary set of course reports like name statistics, data summary report. Again, you pick the variable on the course that you wanna analyze. Uh, so here we're gonna pick department. You pick the data that you're gonna analyze, how many courses or from which time frame or subject matter do you wanna check. And then it'll give you a report of the classes offered, how many were canceled, enrollment registration info, average data, and then finally your gross income. And if you're using Pocket Ledger, what expenses you've logged against it. And it'll give you the net for those programs based on the grouping that you're selecting. All right. Performance review, this is the course top dog. And again, if you're saying, well, wh what courses are generating my best enrollments or the best money? Well, here is your report. It's the statistics course, course performance review. Again, you can choose what it is you wanna sort on. You can choose uh, how many uh, courses you wanna see. Maybe you just wanna see the top 10. You could put in 99999 and run every stinking course in your database if you really, really wanted to look at uh, that range. Again, set the value for what data group you want to look at. Do you want to look at a semester? Do you want to look at the whole year? Do you want to look at a particular time frame for a specific subject matter? Just for your computer courses, just for your youth camps. Uh, again, you're able to do that with the query that you're going to set up with that particular report. So again, this would tell you top 10 courses based on enrollment. So over here, you see the enrollment column. Now you'll note it also includes the other data, due, paid, balance, expense, net, and then how many hours of CEUs it generated. So again, it's a, it's a really, I think valuable report uh, generating your data. Again, if you're looking at that report and you go to your uh, top dog and run the report, you may not have all of these columns if you have an older report. Uh, I'm not sure the early reports included all of these columns in them. Again, um, go to a demo, download it and uh, or export it and import it or ask your tech and they can help you get your report updated. And then finally, last but not least under statistics is the tracking code report. Again, if you, unless I always say about tracking codes, if you, you don't need to do tracking code reporting if you have an unlimited report, uh, marketing budget, okay? So if you got all the money to burn that you could ever hope for in marketing, don't worry about it. For the rest of us, this is kind of useful because what it lets you do is determine, based on, again, what data you want, what promotions are generating what revenue. And again, if you set up your promotion with uh, by putting in the cost of that promotion, it'll actually give you this return on investment calculator, which is for every dollar I spend on this promotion, I'm going to get this many dollars back. And so if we look here, uh, you know, referred by friend, um, there's really no cost to it. And any money I get is basically money in the pocket. So that is a, certainly a high return, a high return promotion. Certainly one of the other reports, and I, I guess you'd say statistics or quick review, uh, is don't forget about the F9 dashboard report. Uh, and, and again, I'm kind of getting off of statistics, but in terms of program management, I think one of the key things about that dashboard report, F9, is that it gives you a report of classes in the next 30 days <clears throat> that are less than the minimum, and then if you check the, uh, check the uh, classes within X of the max, it'll give you classes coming up that are close to full, 
that presumably you might want to talk to the instructor about getting a bigger classroom or uh, talking them into being willing to take a few more classes in their Zoom class. Uh, if they said, oh, I, I only want to do 20, and, oh, we got t uh, 25, or we're, we're going to get full. Can you, can you move up to 25? You know, maybe you'll sweeten their, their, their salary a bit. Uh, but if you can get a few more people into that class. Well, that kind of runs through the um, runs through the base data. We've we've kind of flown through this. Uh, we haven't gone through live examples much. Um, I'm going to put this question out for you again to invite uh, some specific questions and um, a roll back to manager, and we're going to run through some of the reports uh, live here. So. <clears throat> Again, uh, one of the reports that I really like is that uh, um, lifetime value. Now, what I did was I put those in my um, in my um, well, lifetime value. That's not on there. Life history by quarter. Um, I guess that is it. So uh, we're gonna. I set this up as a quick report or my favorite report. Uh, so I set up my criteria, set up a, a, a data set, and now so it's BAM, running the report. This is a, a, a sample of a live database or a real database, so it's taking a while to do the, the crunching right now. But again, if you've got some uh, wish lists on numbers or statistics or um, you know what kind of data would be of use to you, in running um, in managing a program, type it in your box there and um, uh, take a look. Uh, send that to, to Sharon and she can um, <clears throat> she can run that. So, so how about while they're thinking of their questions, I can take a few that signed up the information they want to know when they register for the session. Okay. How about that? Okay. Fire and away. I've tried to look and get questions for those that are here. Okay, somebody here would like to be able to easily pull a count of unique attendees okay. broken down by fee type. Now, I don't know if that's, but let's just do that like for for the year. I Unique broken attendees. Down, broken down uh -huh. by, by what? By notion? fee type. By fee type. Fee type. Fee type. Uh, non-duplicated attendees by fee type. So, Unique so attendees, uh-huh. By fee by type. By fee type. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, now you're you're kind of well. Let's let's uh, hold that thought because I finally have the life history up, so that I, this is an okay. example that I think is uh, the idea that if I wanted to know if, and this is uh, some older data, so this is back in the. Uh, first quarter of 2016, fiscal year 2016, um, I said, that's the data set that I want to look at. I looked at that quarter's worth of students, so 100% of the students enrolled in that quarter. Um, so what this would show you is prior to that quarter, here's how many of these students were in the previous quarter. And then the quarter before that, the quarter then and the previous quarter and the quarter before that and quarter now this is interesting because what we're seeing is and i don't know the history of these classes is that they may have certain classes that run every other quarter and you'll see the numbers there they go down up down up down up but that gives you an idea of this group of students what is their history and what is their future performance in the program, and you're going to typically see that bell curve uh, in this program. Um, okay, so now Megan's going to cut you a break here. She says she know that going by C type could be complicated. <laughs> She'd like maybe just to see a count of unique attendees. Okay, uh, that that we can do, and for that I'm going to go to. I guess we can go to this. I'll I'll pull a smaller subset. One of the things, if you're looking for unique names, how many unique names in the database, the standard deadbeat report will do that. So I'm just going to run deadbeat report, uh, default report for uh, a date range, registration between two dates, 
and I'm going to put in 0101. Uh, I got to go back. This is old data. Uh, 2016 through 0130. Um, 01. I'm going to do 115 because I know that is. Uh, so it says we're going to look at two weeks in 2016. Uh, the deadbeat report, if you go to the last page, go to the last page of the report, it'll give you the total number of unique names and the total number of registrations. Now, this particular report also dis differentiates uh, uh, web registrations. So, but that is just the standard deadbeat report. Now, you could run a deadbeat report I'm trying to think. Yeah, where you're grouping it by fee type, I that's a little trickier. So, but let's go to the fee type because this is one where statistics would come in. Under name statistics, demographic summary, if you go to the drop down on pick a field, you can go and find fee description and again pick your data set. Uh, course number begins with, and we're going to do 16. Uh, I need to pick a data set here. Let's go to 14, 16. Uh, that's an aquatics program. Uh, let's do 16 AC. So 16 AC. Total due. We're going to say amount paid. And the point is this particular program really only had two class fee descriptions. But the point is, whatever you might have for early bird fee, group fee, senior citizen fee, staff fee, this report would break those down into sets. And now that's not a, uh, that's not a unique number of names. But again, where you're trying to look at a unique number of names, that's a bit of a counterintuitive uh, selection because you could have the same person enroll in a couple of different fee levels depending on the circumstance of when they registered or what criteria they might have matched for a given course. So I, you're, you're kind of mixing a little apples and oranges in that. But uh, uh, so anyway, uh, unique names in the system. Um, I'll have to think about that. Actually, um, think about that. Yeah, we'd have to use a just do it on that, uh, Megan, to eliminate duplicate names in a, in a deadbeat, but then uh, we could then sort the deadbeat by fee category and get your report. So I don't have a, I mean, I, I, I don't have a model to do it for you right now, but that would be a, a little bit of editing with the deadbeat report. So Sharon, anybody right. else? Somebody else would like to see, run a report with this information. The source code, so how they heard mm -hmm. about the course, with zip code, course event title, and the course number. That's deadbeat. Uh, I mean, the deadbeat report area would have, I mean, I don't know that source code is on that, uh, but I guess the question is, do they want to, well, actually there is a way to do that. Uh, if you go to names demographic summary, and let's say you, you what you really wanna know is the source code for these people, but you wanna see the rest of the detail, so you could go source code, and instead of using summary report, uncheck summary. Now what that will give you is a detailed list. So let's go ahead and run that now. Uh, 16 AC, amount due. Uh, I, well, that report doesn't show the zip code. We could have added the zip code. This is no tracking code so that you would have the um, Facebook uh, by instructor picked up a referral from a friend. Um, but in terms of adding the course title and zip code would be just editing that onto this report. 
Now, alternatively, certainly the deadbeat report, uh, which is a registration level report, um, you would need to modify the report, add the source code and the uh, uh, and the zip to that. But that would um, that would give you that. Now I'm trying to so so again it kind of you know what is the criteria? Maybe you could uh, if whoever's asking that question. So do you want to have it grouped by source code or grouped by zip code? Uh, it was kind of a, a major minor in the grouping. Amy, that was your question. If you're listening in, you might want to give some more specific. A little clarification on that. And again, it's how you might want to slice and dice that. Uh, Deadbeat is probably the one, if you really got some unique slicey dicey stuff, uh, going in this with a, um, with a sort routine would allow you to uh, begin to do that. Um, uh, one of the examples, well, let's see in, uh, well, I'm going to I'm going to bail out of this, go back to statistics. Uh one of the things that I'd like to highlight for you on the top dog uh, under performance sorting is to, again to note that number 1, you can do it by name or if you are capturing company name by the firm. And the other thing is you can export this data. So again, if you are looking for a group of people to survey about course ideas or uh, new initiatives you'd like to have uh, run as a program, I would think you'd want to reach out to people who are your most, uh, your best customers. Who are the people that are taking the most of your courses? So you said, well, so I want to have 500 people who have taken the most courses and I want to export them to a file. Uh, so we could we could do that and actually be able to get, say, we want to run for the year 2016 because this is that old data set. And we're going to, we could actually skip the money. Uh, oh, this is asking us to import or export the name and address. Well, maybe you want to do it via email uh, preview. So again, this would give you, this would give you the emails of the top 500 students who took classes that year that you could send them a, an invite to participate in some kind of uh, special event or some kind of programming. So again, I think that's, that that um, top dog report in names. If you haven't initiated a um, haven't initiated a, a frequent flyer program, this would give you the ability to do that. Um, <clears throat> of course, this is source codes by zip within a set of dates. Well, um, again, I think Amy's coming back with more details. So let's kind of circle back to this statistical report. Uh, what she's asking for is a for a given class, she wants to know the breakdown by source code and uh, the zip codes by within a range of dates. So if you did that, that's going to tie to your um, tie to your query. So we're going to say we want to do it on source code. Uh, we're going to we're going to do a detailed report. I'm going to modify and add zip code. And so what we'll do is make sure the query includes a particular course number. So we're going to select one particular course number, and I know, uh, sorry, that the the data in this group doesn't have much for for source codes, but we're going to see amount due, and what we're going to do is show in this field. I'm going to make sure which one is which. We're we're modifying right now. Okay, so Mary Butler is the one. So we're going to add another data field here. Okay, and see what we've got for data. And we're going to see if we can add, uh, we got sex educational level. We're going to need to add the zip code on that. Source code is on there. So we're going to actually use the add function. Yep. 
So we're going to use the add name function to add the zip code. So this will tell us for no zip code, here are the names, that's the zip code. Here's the source code, that's the name, that's the zip code. There's a source, that's the name, that's the zip code. So again, um, the, the, the statistical report would get you there. And again, depending on how you wanted to, and I'll say this as an alternate report, uh, Amy's report. Uh, draft and we can actually if you want I can send that off to you so the idea that it really uh, so and again as as with doing when you're analyzing data it's like focusing on what exactly you want to analyze and Amy's doing a good job now of pulling the the data and and getting back to Amy's got the follow-up question is being able to aggregate the data and hang on a second in between a set of dates, a course code, da, 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 and the total of students. We don't need to name the aggregate data, so you'd want to sort it by zip code and by the sum the money. I would think that what uh, the phone number total of students course code i uh, yeah i was going to say there's some kathy uh kathy and martha you might want to clarify uh the money total and the total of students because if you have the are you talking about course code kind of and, and again one of the things and, and i would invite you and again um, I would invite you again, if you've got a idea for a stat report, um, I, I, making a verbal description is good. Feel free to take a Word doc and or take an Excel spreadsheet and kind of draft out student name, number of courses taken, uh, number of this, number of that, you know, draft it out on a piece of paper, whether it's Word or an Excel spreadsheet, whatever is the easiest for you. Uh, invite you to send that to me and I will go ahead and uh, yeah, again, either give you an idea where to start or even put together a report to send that out. And that'll be your Christmas gift. So again, this is kind of a unique, uh, <laughs> unique offer. Feel free to uh, send out your, your, if you would, Santa Chuck. Send your send your wish list to Santa Chuck, and we'll see if we can't deliver something in your uh, stocking for that. So, super, yeah. Sharon, uh, a good session. Any other questions uh, before wrap up? Oh yes, we we got a couple of things. Sharon, you need to do a wrap up note. Note. I um, have a couple of things, Chuck. I think if you can go to aceware.com, we should also remind folks of the top report guide that we have. Um, available to them at any time. It has a lot of good sample reports Under and thumbnail online views. Online references. Oops, you know, not oh, wrong, sorry, wrong I one, told wrong you to go help. Just go to aceware.com and... Resources. Yes. Aceweb resources uh, and... If you student, yeah, but go ahead to guides, manuals, and white papers. Guides, manuals, there it is right there. there. Under guides, manuals, and white papers, top reports. And those have a number of other statistical reports or some of the ones we've covered and, and gives you the reference to that. Um, and again, <laughs> Suzanne and I will, I will respond, ask, why is it called Deadbeat Report, uh, the, this report that Chuck is so in love with? And, and the answer is because one of the first uses for that area was a way to report people who owe money. But it really, uh, the the bottom basic element of the report is the name, the student, and the registration. So again, that really represents probably, uh, I tell uh, customers and staff that I can give you 95% of the reports that you might ever want out of a database out of Deadbeat because of the fact that it has name, course, and registration, and actually location as part of the data. So between those four base, you know, core data elements, we can get that's that's where the bulk of your data comes from. But yeah, it just had a, a, a label of deadbeat, and it certainly is not 
it is not just for checking balances. And if you'll notice 34 additional reports, uh, there is a buttload of different types of things you can do that. So, um, Sharon, oh, okay. we're going to do a wrap up of. Uh, I am going to do a wrap up more. with. Uh, yes, a couple things to watch for in the new year. Our new features webinars that people are appreciating so much will be quarterly again. But you need to sign up. Sign up once for that, and then you're signed up for all four sessions through the year. Um, for a couple of years, we just transferred those registrations over, but it's time to, you know, clean up that list and start anew in 21. So there also, it is. Also, Re register, register for that. For and also, updates. Yeah, we can announce our first webinar of 2021, and that's best is, um, escrow oh. best practices. That's going to be on the 21st in 2021. And a new time. We're going to try 10 a.m. Central Time. It's 11 Eastern, 9 Mountain, and even 8 o'clock Pacific, just to see if the, how that time works for you all. We're going to give that a shot. So those are the two kind of things to watch for in the new year. That's what I have. And not seeing any, anything else, we've kept them the hour. We want to thank everybody for attending. Have a good upcoming weekend. And uh, good luck in getting all of those holiday preparations completed. Yeah. Thanks for happy, joining us today. Happy holidays, nice everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>